This is one of the largest investments in education reform in American history. When President Obama announced the grant competition called Race to the Top, educators across the country were eager to apply for a share of the $4.35 billion. Finally, the federal government is really identifying they're getting it. They're getting it. Carrie Leonard Ellison, a member of the local school board in the small city of Easton, Pennsylvania, felt she was being heard at last. We want to be successful. We're determined to be successful. We need to be supported. With Easton's one high school failing for the past six years, and only 50% of students scoring at grade level in math and reading, Ellison felt the race to the top money could make the difference. This is huge. It's a huge opportunity for each and every child that's here. In early March, Pennsylvania was one of 16 states chosen to come to Washington as a finalist for Race to the Top. Representatives had 30 minutes to defend their plan. We're nervous. <laughs> and it's that pregame jitter. I mean, and if it weren't like that, we would not be ready. If Pennsylvania wins, the state stands to gain $400 million. But Easton, a district with 10,500 students, won't see a penny. Its application was disqualified. Our superintendent signed, our president of our board also signed, and the union president would not sign. Uh, in Easton, anyway, we disagree with the grant. We don't believe it's, it's right for us here. Kevin Dealey is president of the Easton Teachers Union. Race to the top would require that we talk about making uh, changes to our contract, and uh, that my members are opposed to that, uh, vehemently opposed to it. So they directed me to not uh, sign on. Union opposition prevented at least a third of Pennsylvania's school districts from applying for Race to the Top. Other finalists experienced similar resistance. In Florida, just 8% of teacher unions signed on. In Rhode Island, only 5% agreed to participate. And in Washington, D.C., where they have just one union, the response was, no thanks. Union officials say a big problem with Race to the Top is that it seems to favor paying teachers based on their students' success, not simply on years in the classroom and degrees held, as is currently the case. Right now, in 50 states and over the last 50 years, with over 15,000 school districts, they've moved to the same compensation system. There must be a reason, I believe, because it works. Dennis Van Roco is president of the largest teachers' union. You defend the current system. I believe it works, yes. I get paid based on how many years I've been teaching and how many well, graduate credits I have. It has nothing to do with how my students perform? I think, depending on how you do the, the advancement on the salary schedule, there are a lot of ways to do that. But some teachers are better than others. They are. I mean, there's plenty of evidence showing that some teachers actually deliver real performance gains, and some don't. Should those teachers who deliver those performance gains make more money than the ones who don't? Is a yes or no question? Not only, not based just on that factor, no. While Race to the Top does not require that teacher pay be connected to student achievement, it does encourage using student performance as one measure of teacher effectiveness. That's enough to upset Easton's union leader, Kevin Dealey to base a teacher's evaluation and their worth as an educator on how, how much their students grow. It, it just doesn't work that way. And it doesn't sit well with the NEA's Van Rokel, who taught high school math for 23 years. Well, in a class, you know, you never know which part of a, a geometry lesson a class isn't going to get. If based on my assessments, uh, a quiz or whatever, they didn't get my unit on slope, then what they should be watching for is, what did I do as a result? Once I realized that they didn't know it, did I adjust my teaching? Did I find a new way of doing it? That's what I should be judged on. So it's the practice, not the test score. But the test scores are the measure of the practice. I don't believe that. You the union president may not believe it, but another president apparently does. If a school continues to fail its students year after year after year, if it doesn't show any sign of improvement, then there's got to be a sense of accountability. And that's what happened in Rhode Island. 
In February, the entire staff of a failing high school in Rhode Island was fired when their union refused to agree to state-mandated reform. In Easton and in districts all across the country, the tension seems to come down to a fundamental issue. We don't feel that we have a good working relationship that we can sit down across the table and say, yes, I trust you. I trust that you are going to look out for our best interests and that we can work together and collaborate on this in a productive way. Carrie Leonard Ellison of the Easton School Board calls it by a different name. It's communication. There's obviously a critical deficiency in communication. Of the 16 finalists competing for Race to the Top funding, six are right-to-work states, which means teachers do not need to be in a union. Observers are watching closely to see whether Race to the Top is sending a message to teacher unions, collaborate or else. A second round of competition will take place in the summer.